Hey guys, it's Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite offensive plays, uh, good old fashioned power O, power play. All right, in the run game, we're going to talk about base power rules first, and then we're going to talk a little bit about combining power, packaging it with the jet sweep, and turning it into a read play. I think uh, what you're going to start seeing now, and you know, been seeing it at the college level, it's taking hold in the high school level. And now maybe you might start seeing some things uh, in the NFL game now where I think some of the NFL teams are going to start looking at some of the college schemes and, and with the, you know, the evolution of the athletic quarterback who can be dynamic in the run game um, and now you know, taking guys that can really do damage in space. You know, uh, last night, first round of the 2013 draft and the Rams trade up and you know, they trade up to get a five foot eight receiver that's just absolutely devastating in space and you can get him the football a million different ways and he really causes problems for defenses. So I think you're gonna see now, you know, the games kinda to me, the games have always kind of bounced back and forth off one another. You know, I think high school kind of feeds off of what college does for the most part, but you know, I think college guys used to feed off of NFL guys, and now I think it's kinda going almost in the reverse of that. I think some of the NFL guys are starting to feed off what some of the college guys do. And, you know, to me it's just a natural um, transgression, you know, because what's happening now is you have a certain style of play that's being used in college football, and then you have a, almost an opposite style of play in the NFL. And what happens is a lot of the, especially at like the quarterback position, a lot of these quarterbacks are being trained to play football a little bit different way. So then when it comes down to you know, draft time or it comes down to professional football in the NFL, a lot of these guys really don't fit what the NFL teams are trying to do. So it seems to me over the last two or three years you're starting to get some NFL guys who are now gearing things a little bit more towards, you know, the college game. And I think that's not only because of the success some of the things are having in college and, and, and seeing what guys are, are able to create on offense in college, but I think it's also because the NFL guys are realizing a little bit, you know, in my own opinion, you know, for what it's worth, I think the NFL guys are realizing a little bit that we better start catering some things around the skills that, you know, the quarterbacks have and, and the quarterbacks that are out there that we can take. Let's start doing some things. And instead of banging our head against the wall and trying to fit, you know, guys into a scheme, why not we, you know, try and do some things with our scheme that works around the talent that we have available. You know, so... Uh, you know, the great thing about it is the power play has been run for decades. It's been a standard go-to run play for teams for, you know, 40, 50 years. So now what's happening is you're able to take a power scheme and you're able to tweak some things with it and turn it into a read game and, and package it with jet sweep. And now all of a sudden you've got all these great combinations. So I think it's great, to get, you know, the way the game evolutionizes and, and almost revolutionizes and changes all the time. And, you know, you got so many guys that are able to just sit down and put things together and, you know, there's just so many great offensive minds out there, you know, and, and um, you know, you, you take all those guys and you just watch what they do and you watch them package plays and put things together and sit around and, and, and say to yourself, man, that's pretty good. I think I can do that. So, you know, what we were able to do, I've always been a fan of the power. I've always run the power. When I was a pro eye guy, I ran power. When I was a one back, you know, 11 personnel guy, I ran power. And now that I'm more of a spread guy, I still run power. It's going to be the first thing that we get in. You know, we start spring ball on Wednesday, May 1st. And, you know, the second thing in our run scheme is going to be power. It's always going to be that way. It's going to be a mainstay for us. So what I want to do today is I want to talk a little bit about the power play itself the base power play, the base rules, um, you know, little nuances within the power play and things I, I think you got to keep in mind. And then I'd like to show you how we build the jet sweep package with the power play, turn it into a replay, you know, which helped us this past season have an extremely successful season and, and our quarterback led um, our state in rushing for quarterbacks through 11 games. So really effective for us, effective play, really a pain in the neck, uh, you know, on defense when you're trying to stop it. It's got a lot of moving parts to it and, uh, you know, really messes with some defensive structure. So first thing I want to look at is just base standard power. All right. Your base standard power play, what you're going to have is you're going to have a front side down gap scheme. Okay. So your front side tackle is going to be responsible for the B gap. 
All right, your front side guard is going to be responsible for the A gap. Now, what you have to understand is you're always going to look for double teams so that you can get great first level movement. All right, but you can't just go out and necessarily point to guys and say we're going to double here, we're going to double here. You have to have some type of rules so when the front changes, your kid can live by your kids can live by those rules. The other thing you have to understand is how to take care of run through. All right, from the linebacker level and make sure that you don't get tackles behind the line of scrimmage. So. On the front side, you got to make sure you take care of front side B gap, front side A gap. Now, perfect world, three technique, no run through. We're going to try and double this three technique, but when we do so, we're not going to step to the three technique with the offensive guard, all right, to try and double the three technique, because in my experience in high school with the kids I've had, when we step out to the three technique, we, live the, we leave the A gap wide open for run through. So we're always going to step inside to our gap responsibility first with a short check step. And then we're going to take the next step right up through the crotch of the three technique. We're going to be down in the B gap here, and we're going to try and move this three technique back to the backside inside linebacker. Okay? Center's going to block back. All right? Anytime you have a puller involved, you're usually going to have some type of back block. Center's going to be backside A gap. You know, if it's a three technique, you might have your center have to post a three technique, but the center's responsible for the backside A gap. Okay? Your backside guard is going to be a guy that pulls. And for us, we skip pull so that we can keep our eyes and our shoulders and hips parallel to the linebacker that we need to block. We don't turn, you know, we don't drop step, turn and pull like a trap block. We actually skip pull and get out so that our shoulders and hips are square to the backer. So we're going to get out here and skip pull, and we're going to wrap on a play side inside linebacker. Okay, backside tackle now is going to hinge the B gap. So in other words, he's going to step, seal, cut off B gap first. If there's nothing in the B gap, he's going to hinge and make this corner wide for that defensive end to run around. Okay? So we don't just put this backside tackle up on an inside linebacker. For us, without a tight end, if we're dealing with six man boxes, we don't need to get up or have the tackle get up on that backside inside linebacker. Now, if it was a seven man box, we'd be a guy short and we'd have to scoop there. But what happens is, if you straight scoop the B gap up to a backer, a lot of times on the backside, all right, this end can really start making some plays and making this an issue. So we're going to step and seal three technique. If there's a three there, we got to cut them off. Any run through from a blitzer because the guard's pulling, we're going to make sure we take care of this B gap first, and then we're going to hinge to make that end run wide. Okay, our front side sniffer here, fullback, we call him a sniffer because he's so tight to the line of scrimmage. Okay, and you know he's basically close enough to sniff the offensive lineman in front of him. We don't play him back at a fullback deck because of the wrong arm possibilities. Okay, so we get him up here as a sniffer, so off the down block, defensive ends that want to bend real hard off the down block, we feel like in this position, the sniffer, all right, has a shorter run to kick out that defensive end. Now, I've seen a lot of teams that run the power with the backs real deep, and without a tight end, if you play a defensive team that's really going to bend real hard off the down blocks, when this kid is five yards deep, this kid's going to bend so hard that you're never going to be able to run the power play up inside. Okay, so we play him as a sniffer, not as a true fullback, all right, or at fullback depth. He's up here about a yard and a half to two yards behind the O line, and now that gives him inside leverage and it gives him a chance, even off the bend, it gives him a chance to kick that end out. Okay, we're going to take the front side slot, we're going to try and cut off this linebacker here. The tighter this linebacker gets to the box, all right, to start folding in on the run, now you've got to be able to throw the ball outside to protect that. Now, there are some teams that run some leverage power screen stuff where they run power and they run key screens where they read this outside, all right, linebacker, nickel safety, whatever you want to call them. We, I do not do that in my offense. I think it's a great theory. It's something that we don't do, but I've seen people do it, and, and it's very, very effective. So as this kid starts to squeeze in the box, they run some screens where if he squeezes hard, they pull and throw a screen. If he sits, they give the power. All right, so that's another way to handle it. I personally don't do that. Okay, I think it's a great play. I think it's a great theory. It's just something that we do not do. All right, now, slot's going to try and cut off that backer there. Corner's going to be straight up. You can also push crack this corner if you think you're getting a lot of safety support. All right. So if you think you're getting quarters robber with safety support, you can push. If he's the support guy, go in there and crack hard. All right, on the backside, you're going to try and take care of deep man middle of the field. All right, so your backside receiver is going to try and go and get the deep man middle of the field. We try and keep the power for us in the A-gap 
front side A gap play. This is straight give, no read for us right now. If I'm drawing it up as a just a two back, all right, straight tail back power right now, this would be straight give for us, no read. Okay, we're going to keep it in the A gap. Now, I think it's very important, all right, that you keep the power in the A gap from a shotgun, no tight end look. And the reason is because you're going to get hard bend off the down block of the tackle. You're going to get a hard bend inside. So if your back gets wide from the B to the C gap, and this gets really squeezed down hard because you don't have a tight end and you don't have width in your set, now what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of problems getting this ball where you want to get it. So we try and keep this tail back, front side as tight as we can in that A gap right now, so that even if we get a bend and squeeze, all right, and this guy's kind of giving you know, the sniffer all he can handle, we still feel like we should be able to get the ball up inside of it. Okay, so that would be base power, all right, two back base power without a tight end because we don't use a tight end in our offense. That would be two back base power, straight give, down gap rules, back block here, kick out, all right, backside guard, pull, wrap on the front side inside linebacker. Okay, backside tackle, hinge the B gap. All right, again, make sure you take care of run through on the, on the front side. All right, make sure that your guys understand what gaps they're accounted for so you don't get linebacker run through. Make sure you hard scoop and hinge, all right, the backside B gap so you don't get run through and you can cut off a three technique. But then make sure if there's nothing in the B gap, you hinge that tackle to make that five technique really run wide. Okay, now, the next thing I want to show you, okay, is how we would, you know, for us, one of the next things that we will do is we will make this. All right, we tie it into our tempo packages a lot, all right? But what we will do is we will make this now, we will make this a package play, okay? So what we will now do, all right, is we will make this jet sweep tagged with power, okay? We're going to run jet sweep. And we're going to tag it with power, so we're now going to block power rules up front, okay? We're going to package the jet sweep with it. So now we've got two opportunities right now. We take one of our best players in space and one of our fastest players on the jet, and then now our quarterback is the guy that's going to run the power, okay? So you have to have a kid that you feel comfortable with running the ball. You have to have a kid that you feel comfortable with in the read game because this is a double option theory, okay? It now becomes a read play. All right, it's jet sweep package with power. So what we're going to do now is up front, we're going to do everything the same. Okay, we're going to be B gap, A gap, try and double a three technique and work it all the way back to the backside inside linebacker. Okay, center now. Now again, make sure you got this mic on run through if he shows up. If he goes over the top, we don't worry about him. We don't block him. We only block him if he shows up in run through and the guard will come off on him right now to tackle. Okay, unless for whatever reason you got a hard A gap spike from the three technique with the mic running through the B gap, the tackle should never come off on the mic. Okay, it should be double the three technique as hard and as far as you want to, and the guard should come off on the backside will. Okay, now if you move the three technique so far and the will ran over the top and the tackle had to come off for the will, that's a feasibility, but we try and explain to our kids I don't want the tackle coming off on the mic. Okay. We can handle the mic if he runs. We have ways to handle the mic. We have answers if the mic wants to run. All right, don't let the tackle come off. Stay on a down block with leverage and move this three technique. Center blocks back. Backside A gap right now. Okay, backside guard's going to pull and wrap. Play side inside linebacker on the power play. Backside tackle's going to hinge, scoop the B gap, and then hinge it right there. So he's got to make sure nothing shows in the B gap. If nothing shows, he's going to get some depth on the hinge. Okay, so it would be, he'd work basically to step to scoop inside, and then he'd step back to hinge. If anything shows in the B gap, the hinge is off. He doesn't hinge, he scoops the B gap. He only hinges, okay, like the backside of sprint out, he only hinges if there's nothing in the B gap. Okay? So, we're going to do everything the same up front. The only difference, okay, we're going to be the same here, and we're going to be the same there. Okay? The only difference now, all right, is because we're going to read, all right, what we're going to do is we are going to physically read the front side C gap player. We're not going to kick him out like we do on normal power. Okay? So because we're not kicking him out, we have to have a way to handle him. We're going to handle him by reading him with the jet sweep. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this sniffer now and we're going to put him outside 
this defensive end, and he's going to block the first thing that runs through, okay, from the inside out towards the jet sweep. Because remember, he doesn't need to block the mic on power because the guard's going to block the mic if we run power. He needs to be out here for the jet sweep. Now, some of the adjustments we've made, okay, if we are facing a one linebacker middle, a 4-3 structure, maybe a 4-2-5 structure with one linebacker in the middle, we don't feel like the mic can run down our jet sweep, so sometimes we will put the sniffer and try and get him up on the strong safety. Okay, we've done that before. All right, we've done that before. If we're getting a two linebacker middle, okay, we always start by putting the sniffer outside the C gap and taking run through. So that if we get a six man box or a three, four, five man box with a two linebacker st structure where there's a linebacker sitting closer to the B gap, that kid we feel like may be an issue on a jet, so we try and block him on run through. Okay? Now, the other answer for that is we always watch what the inside linebacker does on a jet action because if you have inside linebackers that run like heck to the jet, you come right back and run predetermined quarterback power. Okay? So that's one of the answers and the counters we come back to right away. If your linebackers like to run with the jet, we'll come back and run predetermined quarterback power. We're not talking about that today, though. We're talking about the replay. So we're going to get this guy outside here, all right, up to turn inside and look for run through, anything running through inside out. Again, 4 3 structure. Five man box with one stack linebacker, you can go ahead and try and get your sniffer on this strong safety if you want to, because I don't think the mic's going to be an issue on the jet. Okay? We're going to take the backside receiver here and we're going to run him in jet motion. We're going to try and snap the ball, depending on how good our center is, how fast this kid is, how good the quarterback is. Standard, snap the ball while he's just outside the tackle box. So, about a yard outside the tackle, we're going to snap the ball. Okay? Now, it is jet sweep, but you have to understand, as he comes across here, this is going to be a read, which means there's going to be a mesh. You have to work on that. There's physically going to be a mesh here with the quarterback taking a few shuffles towards the read key. Okay? So, yes, this wants to be full speed, okay, but it takes a lot of work because this needs to be full speed with a read, with the quarterback working, play side, with the jet player, okay? He's physically going to shuffle with that jet player towards the read key, okay? That's about the only way you can do it full speed. If you try to stand here and just flat foot read from back hip to front foot or back hip to front hip like you would on maybe veer or midline, all right? That guy's running full speed, never going to have enough time to read the five. You might as well make it a straight give or a straight keep. So you have to be able to present the ball and shuffle towards the read key a little bit to buy your quarterback more time to make the read. Now, don't let your quarterback shuffle 10 yards wide, all right, because then he's getting closer to the five technique. Okay? Now, this past year, my quarterback was real good at it. We had some plays where we shuffled so far that even though the, the end was bending to take away the quarterback run, but we had shuffled so far that we actually had some keeps outside the five technique. Not designed that way. Was it done by design? It was done because my quarterback was a very good player, and sometimes you just got to let players play. You know, so think about players, not plays. All right, so I didn't overcoach this play too much. My player made plays. All right, but we don't want him to shuffle when we teach it. We don't want him shuffling too wide because then he makes the job easier on a five technique. So you might get maybe a yard or two of a shuffle here so that you can mesh this and ride it so that you can read it, okay? Big coaching point on a jet when you're reading it. You try and make sure this guy, and when we do drills, we'll put a cone out here, okay? We tell the jet guy that he cannot turn up field until he gets wider than that cone. And that cone is usually going to be about five yards, okay? It's going to be about five yards outside the end man on the line of scrimmage. Now, why we say that is we need this jet to continue to be flat because we're not blocking the C-gap player. So if he gets the jet and has a habit of turning the jet up or getting closer to the line of scrimmage, he's bringing himself closer to the read key. Okay? So the jet's got to stay flat and wide for five yards past the end man on the line of scrimmage. Key point, you can work on that in drills when you're working on the mesh of this and the timing of it. You can do it without pads. You can put a coach here, a cone here, do whatever you want. The jet player must be wider than that before he ever turns up the field. 
Okay, that's a big coaching point with the Jet. Okay, quarterback is going to read the C-gap player. If the C-gap player widens, okay, if the C-gap player widens, all right, quarterback is going to keep the ball on the power, and the quarterback will become your player, all right, running the power. It's an inverted read. All right, the, the receiver becomes the outside part of the option, and the quarterback becomes the dive part of the option. In this case, we're blocking power, so the quarterback's going to run the power. Okay, if this end is a bend and a squeeze guy off the down block, all right, the quarterback will give the ball to the jet sweep. So again, what we're trying to do is we're not only trying to get some of our best players in space, but we're trying to make the five technique wrong, and then we're trying to make them work to support the run game off of what the five technique does. So if the five technique wants to be a hard bend player off all down blocks, well, now we're going to have our best jet guy on the perimeter. We just got to work like heck to get the perimeter blocked. Because if the five is going to be a hard, heavy bender, we feel pretty good that we're going to get the ball to the perimeter. The only thing is we have to make sure that we can block the support on the perimeter. Now, the tough thing in high school is you can't cut. So we played some teams where this outside backer is better than my slot, and they can afford to bend the five and let me get the ball to the perimeter because this kid dominated the slot player. So you do need a good slot player that can block, okay? But in essence, that's all you're trying to do is you're trying to run base power play that you teach on day one, all right? You're combining it with jet sweep so that you can get one of your best players now to the perimeter, all right? And you're running double option, inverted reads off the five technique so that you're trying to make the five techniques life miserable all night. That's kind of the premise of our offense, all right? In our run game, we try and make the, the life of the five technique miserable. Usually, you know, in, in the conference I'm in and the state that, I, that I'm coaching in, the five techniques are usually war daddies. They're guys that can go, okay? A lot of times you can't just base block them all night long, so we try and give him a bunch of different reads, all right? And this is part of that, running the jet, getting the jet wide, making sure that the five technique can't be right. If he squeezes, we give the jet. If he's up the field or a wide guy, then we're going to run the quarterback power. All right, and what we've got is we've got one of our best players to the perimeter on jet, so we've got a perimeter run tagged, okay, with an inside run. You know, a lot of times you'll, you'll hear about guys trying to get the ball to the perimeter and they can't get it there, all right? And they've got the play is predetermined as jet, it's predetermined as toss, it's predetermined as buck sweep or whatever it may be, okay? And they're not getting the ball to the perimeter. Well, those plays are all dead when they don't get to the perimeter, all right, because they have nothing else in the play to go to. When you package the play together with an inside run, like a power play, well now we're running base bread and butter power with double teams and a backside guard getting to the front side to wrap, while also trying to get the perimeter of the defense. Okay, so I think, you know, to me, offense is going to all package theories, packaging runs and passes together, packaging different runs together. All right, offenses are getting smart to where they say, okay, well, Instead of packaging a run and a pass to say, all right, well, if the defense is in this, audible to the run. If the defense is in that, audible to the pass. Well, now what coaches are doing is they're tagging plays together and packaging them together to say, all right, don't worry about audible and run this play. And if the linebacker does this, throw the ball. If he does this, run the ball. If the defensive end does this, give the sweep. But if the defensive end does that, run the power. So we're packaging plays together so that we don't get stuck in bad plays. Okay, and we're giving the defense multiple plays to defend on one snap. All right, so the defense has to defend perimeter run and hardball downhill power on one snap. Not one snap at a time, not power one play, jet sweep the next. They got to de they got to defend both of them at the same time. All right? Mix that in with tempo and playing real fast. This can be run out of two back looks. We can run this out of two back with an offset tailback. We can run it out of two by two with a jet. We can run it out of three by one out of, with a jet. All right, it's endless the amount of ways you can do it. So again, what you can get to is one standard package play run from a bunch of different formations and a bunch of different looks giving you the appearance of running different plays, okay? I think any good offense, power play has been around for a while. I think the power is a great way of running downhill. All right, getting your offense a mentality and a mindset, getting your backs downhill. It's a good short yardage run. It's a good first down run. All right, I think the power play needs to be a staple in almost any offensive scheme that you run. All right, I think if you're an eye team, a spread team, a wing T team, a flex bone team, everybody has the ability to run power. And I think 
you know, when you watch enough football, power play is something that, that is the bread and butter of most good offenses that you're going to see. All right. I hope this helps you out a little bit with the power play and, and packaging the power with the jet sweep to make it a replay. Okay. As always, just try and keep in mind the idea is to get your players to play fast. They have to know their assignments. They have to be able to execute their assignments at full speed. Otherwise, you're going to get paralysis by analysis. The brain's going to go on overload and they're going to slow down. Okay, remember, you're not going to play good football until you play fast football.